I'm feeling really, really tired today. Um, for those of you who've been in relationships for a little while and you live with your significant other, do you actually sleep? Because I, I feel like I never, ever sleep. And Kiri Sleep talks about petrol prices and cornfields and people called Colin. Kiri's a teacher and he frequently references one of the other teachers called Colin and how Colin's class is better than his class. I'm not even sure if this is relevant to the video. This is going to be a favourites video. Um, I have one of those months where I kind of had beauty amnesia and I don't really remember what happened. I either wore exactly the same as the month prior or yeah, I just don't remember anything. And these are the few products that I do remember really, really loving and products that I remember getting out again and giving them a bit of a lease of life in their old age. So I'm really sorry. This has been a really boring month for me. But, you know, I can't always be interesting all the time. So the foundation I really, really liked um, for the later half of this month was MAC Matchmaster. And the reason I like this is because I finally finished my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. <sighs> Seriously, I asked for a high five when Kira got home that day. I was like, Kira, look, the bottle is empty. And then I, I made him high five me. And then I did a victory lap. Jogged slowly around the lounge. So I am really, really happy that that is gone forever. And then we went to Paris. So it was the day before we went to Paris that I finished it and I've never been so excited to finish something in my whole life. So I took um, Bourgeois Healthy Mix Serum and Face Atelier to Paris and that was that. But then when I came back from Paris I've been absolutely loving the MAC Matchmaster Foundation. Now the shade ain't particularly good on me. Um, I did notice I thought it was okay when I did my original review. I thought it was okay but then I was a bit more tanned then and now I'm white from you know, eight months out of the sun, so the colour isn't particularly good, but I love the way that this looks, I love the way that it applies, I like the way that it wears, I don't love the way that it wears, but I like how it looks on the skin, it looks very light, it feels light, it gives enough coverage, but slightly kind of matte, but brought to life, if that makes sense, so it has a kind of semi-matte finish, it's slightly luminous, and it's just a really, really comfortable foundation, I've used about half of this, I think, and I really, really enjoy using it. I just, it is orange though, let's face it, the bottle, it, it looks orange. Um, it's supposed to match to your skin tone, but I can't really quote you on that. I just really like the way that it applies and buffs into the skin, and it's just, it's a very, very lovely luminous matte finish so I just find it a really comfortable foundation to wear. Next up this month I really liked four blushes. I, I'm i gonna have to confess that um, February was a good blush month for me, well February and January because I got a lot of new blushes and I took them all with me to Paris so I took six blushes so these are four of the six um, I took the Chanel blush, the New Horizon one, I took Inamasca Saw, I took Tarte Exposed and I took Shu Uemura um, PPH47. So these are all of my favourite blushes for the month of February and let's start with this one. This is Tarte Exposed and this is beautiful. I would say Tarte Exposed on me is almost a peachy tan but I think it's really really flattering and it's one of those kind of cheekbones and a compact kind of ideas. It just makes you look like you have awesome cheekbones and like a really sculpted face. On me it definitely looks more warm toned but I find it really really easy to wear, I find it really really easy to pair with things and the only thing is that it's a lot more pigmented than NARS Du Sir, so I do need to exercise caution with how much I put on, but I think these are really high quality blushes. Next blush I loved was the Horizon blush, just because when you get a new shiny thing, you kind of want to use it all the time. So this is the new Chanel blush, and the reason that I loved this blush was because of the really soft, kind of lit from within glow that it provides. I mean, the colour for me is this kind of peachy pink that I get and it's not very unique whatsoever I think. But the glow that it imparts, which is really really soft and finely milled, 
it's just perfect. I just think that it's very, very well made and I think when Chanel do a product like this, they do it with such finesse and style, the quality is always there. So this is a, not a unique colour, it's a peachy pink, I have plenty of those. But the way that it's been done and the level to which it's been done are the key here. There's no glittery shimmer, there's no chunks, it's just a beautiful, good quality peachy pink. So next up for February I have Illamasqua Sob, which I talked about yesterday. It smells like Milky Buttons, which is, well, it's in my opinion, that is awesome. But I think that some people may not agree with me there. The reason I really liked this was because in the beginning of February I was using up my Estee Lauder Double Wear and I found that this really really helped to counteract the dry skin look. It just looked really matte and really flat and I remember wearing Estee Lauder Double Wear to a wedding. The photos that came back did not look like my face. They did not. I had a, like a really flat nose like Voldemort and... I've got to say the, the the makeup and the prosthetics that they used on Ray Fiennes were awesome in that movie but I don't want myself to look like that in photos. So I looked a bit like a Ray Fiennes and to top it off I had a pixie cut so um, I had a flat nose and a weird face and it was just, it was just wrong. That was uh, slightly anecdotal. So I was using a lot of Illamasqua Sob in the earlier half of the month because I really loved the kind of dewy effect it gave me. I love the sheer flush that it gives because although these are pigmented it's the way that they kind of melt into the skin because the formula is very very soft and slippery. The colour just kind of melts into the skin so you get this um, flush of colour in a way that I've not had with a cream blush before. I just really like the effect that these give. It's very soft and very... I don't know, it just kind of becomes one <laughs> with the texture of your skin. It becomes one. What am I, a lifestyle coach or something here? I just love the way that this really doesn't sit on top of the skin. It really just melts into the skin. And um, because I was wearing such chalky matte foundations, I just found it perfect for giving me a bit of dewiness. The last blush is one that you can't get anymore and I'm not going to harp on too much about it but it's just the perfect brightening peachy pinky thing. I don't even know. I'm just going to stop trying to describe, describe colours because I'm not very good today. But I love the way that this subtly brightens my skin. It just makes my skin look very awake, very kind of well slept. It's just a really, really flattering, beautifully crafted blush. Craft? That sounds wrong, like we're talking about wicker baskets or something. Artisan bread. I just love the way that this is really, really high quality. It lasts on my skin really, really well. And I'm quite enjoying those kind of sheer flushes of colour at the moment. So the fact that this is quite a sheer application doesn't bother me whatsoever because... I'm really, really enjoying that. I just love the way that it make, it really works with my complexion and I love the little subtle gold flecks in it. Apparently that is the universal hand signal for flex. <laughs> so my lipstick for the month, I basically spent a lot of my month being obsessed with Catrice Spicy Coral. If you didn't see my previous favourites video, you will not know the beauty of this lipstick. And while I was in Paris, I think I left it near a radiator, but it's kind of like broken off and gone all wibbly and I am a bit heartbroken actually. So when I got back from Paris I switched to MAC C Sheer. You can see it's nearly done. This is near enough one of the first lipsticks I bought and it's really old actually but you know it smells fine. It's still got the same texture so I'm not really bothered. Plus it's nearly done. I'm not gonna give up the ghost on that. You're gonna do it. The reason I love C Sheer is because it is a luster finish, so it gives your lips that kind of glossy texture. It's very, very lightweight to wear. It might not last as well as a matte lipstick, but to be honest, I don't really care at the moment because I'm not really after long-lasting makeup. I'm after lip textures that are glossy or lightweight and just comfortable to wear. So on me, C Sheer comes up quite a a neutral slightly browny tinged coral and I think it's a beautiful neutral coral to wear. I just think it's really easy to wear. It works really nicely with a peachy or coral blush. I just find the lightweight texture of this really really appealing at the moment so see sheer blast from the past I have to say. Okay so the last favourite is a brush. This is the LY38 from Louise Young. Honestly I think I'm in love. This 
is amazing. Since buying this brush, I've barely touched any other crease brush. I have, I didn't even need to wash this MAC 226 this month because I've not touched it. I have been all over this. This is just lovely. It's so soft and I love the shape because it's longer and thinner than the 226 and it's a lot softer as well. I also feel like the hairs aren't going to fall out anytime soon whereas with a MAC brush I think you never know. A lot of MAC brushes that I've owned have been kind of really inferior quality to cheaper brushes so um, I love the shape of this, I love how soft it is and how it doesn't feel uncomfortable when you're blending into your eyes. This is just really really comfortable and I love the tapered point which makes it just makes it so easy to get into that crease and out of V and it gives a really beautiful soft distribution of colour. I just I can't say enough good words about this brush so I think I need to invest in some more eye brushes from Louise Young because this one has really blown me away and I didn't think I could actually be that impressed by an eye brush apart from eyeliner which I am a stickler for but otherwise I don't really generally care as long as it gets it on but um no, this is really, really good. So that was all of my favourites, however boring that may have been for you, because I know I've had a really boring month. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Have a lovely day, everybody, and yeah, have a lovely weekend as well.